April 2020. We're in the midst, the backside of the pandemic around the world, and we pray for you pastors, all the pastors around the world this morning. As you're standing in faith, believing God for funds and provision for your congregations, and uh, we're praying over the pastors around the world. I'm getting reports that uh, there's a lot of stabbings and killings and marriages because there's no food and people are angry and there's no money and uh, the saints that should have been saints acting like ain'ts, like they ain't got no word at all. They just scattering. And uh, so we're praying for the pastors around the world in Pakistan, Sri Lanka, India, Uganda, and Nigeria. Getting reports from everywhere. Uh, it's exposing what's in people's hearts. This pandemic is exposing how strong your house is built upon the rock or whether it's built upon sand or built upon rock. But we're praying uh, that the Lord is intervening and lifting this uh, shadow of darkness off the earth and the spring is springing forth and God's going to spring forth at the same time. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm calling this message this morning. I, the Lord, uh, he just dropped it in my spirit Thursday. Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? And uh, arise war and eagles. This is a, a prophetic word, again, a prophetic message. It's a message from the throne of God. Uh, is there not a cause? Is, you know, to put the picture of David and Goliath. And the coronavirus is like a Goliath. And we'll look at this, some scriptures, and I'm going to just share three different instances where uh, God is speaking. And he said the Old Testament is a type and shadow of the New Testament. And so we'll look at 1 Samuel 17. You can read the whole chapter. Really, I'm not going to read the whole chapter. We know the story that uh, uh, the Philistines came against Israel. Israel was on one mountain. The Philistines was on the other mountain. And they said, uh, aren't you uh, men? Uh, and Goliath came down into the valley and said, why don't you send somebody down and fight me? If you win, we'll be your servants. If you lose... You'll be our servants. And so he came down in 1 Samuel 17, verse 10 says, And the Philistines said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. And it's like the coronavirus said, I defy anything or anyone or anything in the earth. I defy this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. And when Saul and all ears were heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Uh, when we got news and they got news of the coronavirus, the whole earth has shut down. They're dismayed. Everybody's afraid. Oh, don't breathe on me. Don't get next to me. Don't touch me. Fighting over, why ain't you man wearing a mask? I'm wearing a mask. I mean, it's just fear is everywhere. And, and they're telling them, well, you got to shelter in. Don't have church. Well, the church is the place where the healing is. I don't understand why. why. We, 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 don't even def we defy the spirit of, uh, of coronavirus. Is there not a cause to stand against this uh, wickedness? Because we know in the church, we know it's a disease, but every disease has a life to it. And life and death are in the power of our tongue. And we can rebuke that thing and command it to shrivel up and die. And it has to shrivel up and die. We defy that spirit. First, first Samuel 17, he said, the Philistine, listen to this. The Philistine came out morning and in the evening, presenting himself for how long? 40 days. May 1st will be 40 days. That this coronavirus that says we defy you. You're not coming out. That everybody's been sheltered in place. People are getting antsy. No, it's, it's almost like the same thing. At that time, Israel was afraid. Nobody wanted to come out and fight him. Everybody was sheltered in place. Everybody was hiding in their camp on one mountain and they on the other mountain. And nobody had enough courage or boldness to go out and face Goliath. It was, it was sheltering in place. Stay in place. Uh, he's out there railing calling their mama names and calling them names every morning and the evening. Come on out, you, uns you uh, sissies. Come on out and fight me. And uh, they were fighting. Now, the Bible says in 1 Samuel that uh, David's father had three, his three elder sons 
had followed Saul to the battle. And David was left taking care of the, Saul's sheep. And the names, I look up their names, one of the first oldest one name was Eliab. His name means almighty chief. So he was the firstborn. And we know that he uh, rebuked David because of his pride because he was afraid to go out and fight himself. He was the firstborn. He was supposed to be the almighty. He was supposed to be the one to go down and meet Goliath, but his, he didn't live up to his name. The next son was Abinadab. His name means father of generosity. He was, a, he was, a, he was generous. Uh, as you read the story about David, he was the, David's, they were good, good brothers. Uh, he was always all, uh, protecting David. But the, uh, and the third name was Shama. Now, how would you name somebody Shama? Consternation, astonishment, desolation, waste. <laughs> Wonderful. What would you name a child like that? It must have been a hard time having that baby. Amen. It was a <laughs> she must have pushed and pushed for two days trying to get that baby out. She called him, named him that way. And so these were David's brothers. And in this scenario of the fear and the terror over Israel that uh, everyone was in the camp, everybody was shaking in their boots. Uh, uh, so David's father said, now, David, I want you to be the Uber driver and you deliver some food to your brothers, amen? Everybody sheltered in place. You be the Uber driver, take a donkey. And Jesse said to David, his son, take your brothers an ephod of parched grain and these 10 loaves uh, and carry them quickly to your brothers at the camp. Also take these ten cheeses to the commander of a thousand. See how your brothers are fair and bring some token from them. So give me word. You go, you go deliver them something to eat. Amen. And uh, find out. And he gave, uh, it's interesting, I just saw that ten cheeses and ten uh, uh, loaves of, 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 of bread. Ten is the number of testing. Ten is the number of trial. It's another testing and trial, whether it be for good or for be for evil. Ten is another testing, and we're in 2020, which is four times ten, and we're really being tested in this hour. Amen. Four times testing. You've been through a test, so don't so know that you're being tested. And a lot of people are failing the test. I'm telling you, a lot of Christians have failed the test. Uh, we'll get into that, but uh, the battle's going on, and and David come to find out and says. Uh, uh, What's, what, what's going to happen? First Samuel 17, 25, it says, And the Israelites said, Have you seen this man? Is come? Have you seen how big this coronavirus is? Wow. Surely he has come out to defy America, the earth, and everybody in the earth. <laughs> Amen. And, and the man who kills him, the man who comes up with the cure, him the king will enrich with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free from taxes and service in Israel. So we, we've been enriched with great riches. The states have shut down. Uh, in America, we've shut down a lot of places. Um, I've been reading and finding out that a lot of uh, the hospitals now, it don't matter what you die from, they're going to say you died from coronavirus. Because if they say you died from coronavirus, the hospital gets $13,000. Even if you had cancer, or you died of cancer, you died of stroke, whatever, they get there. And if they put you on a ventilator, they get $39,000. Oh, this isn't in their best interest to keep you sick and keep you in the hospital and not cure you, amen? Even though it looks, they, they say it's bad, but it's not as bad as they're claiming it to be because it's all about money. It's all about corruption. Uh, these states, why would, uh, why would the governor of this state want to open up this state when this state is broke? I'm just asking a question. I mean, uh, Illinois is broke. They didn't tax everybody to death. They, they tax your taxes on top of a tax, on top of a tax. They can't pay the people's pension. So why not shut down for two months? We don't have to pay their salaries. We don't have to pay the teachers' salaries. We don't, they can go on unemployment. We don't have to pay uh, all of this. And we can gain two months' worth of money that we don't have to spend. So that's something to think about. See, we, motivation. There's a motivation in everything that is being happen, taken on right now uh, around, the, around this earth right now. So Eliab, his elder brother, verse 7, 28 of, uh, of 1 Samuel, 17, uh, 17, 28. Eliab, his brother, heard that when 
he, what he said to the men. And Lab's anger was kindled against David. David came up and said, uh, uh, why ain't you going to the battle? What's, what's the matter? So his brother, his oldest brother, got mad at him against David and said, why you come here with whom you have left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your presumption and the evilness of your heart. You came down that you might see the battle. The oldest was jealous of the youngest because Samuel had come to the family and anointed him to be king and there was a jealousy going on against David. And David said, I just came down. He said, I know you want to be presumptuous. You're presumptuous to think that you're going to be king right now. You're just evil right now. And so we're seeing the evangelical church pride. We're seeing the denominational church pride is attacking those that believe the word of God, those that believe that God is the healer, those that have worked miracles, those that have cast out demons, those that have signs and wonders, and they attack the pastor and say, you're supposed to shelter in, you're not supposed to have service, look at us, we're not having service, we're, 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 we're obeying the laws of the land, how come you can't obey the laws of the land? I'm not like the laws of the land, I'm like David, amen, I got a different spirit, and, I, and there is a cause, is there not a cause in America, is there not a cause around the world to stand up for the living God? He is our God and so there's an attack and we're seeing the attack uh, uh, especially in um, the democratic states that they want the churches shut down they want you distance they don't want you to be close to each other they don't want corporate prayer to go together because corporate prayer shakes kingdoms of darkness corporate prayer shakes demons and principalities and power so the, the, the there's going to be as I prophesied before there's going to be a mainstream attack on the, the evangelical church attacking the uh, what we call the charismatic or the apostolic church is going to be an attack on the church because they want to line up with the government and line in fact the evangelical church has lined up already behind the president of America they said well he's he, he he's God's chosen but I posted year, last year I said yes God chose Jehu to deal with Jezebel and Jehu did what God wanted to do but the Bible says when Jehu got through he turned his back on God and worship Baal worse than what the people were and so yeah God may use a man but you better watch what's happening later on down the road what he does so he, Jehu was powerful. I mean, he dealt with Jezebel. He dealt with Ahab. He dealt with the crookedness and the, the perversion and all that. And he killed him and everything. But then he turned his back on God himself. David said, what have I done? I only asked the question, how come y'all not fighting? Now you're mad at me and jealous at me. Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Never trade your armor. For Saul's armor is the, is the story, really the story that God's trying to relate to us is that the world system and the church system, you can't, they're not anointed to deal with hard cases. They're not anointed to deal with the coronavirus. They're not anointed. They don't have trust in God or faith in God that God will heal people from the coronavirus. God, the coronavirus was healed 2,000 years ago on Calvary's tree. Jesus already healed that coronavirus, and yet the, the, the many in the church have a fear because the government says, and, and this says, you're supposed to shelter in faith. You're, the Bible says he that seeks to save his life will lose his life. That means that a lot of us really are not committed to the kingdom of God. We have really not committed our heart, soul, body, and spirit unto God. He is the author and finish of our faith. Whether I get the coronavirus or not, it's up to God anyway. If I get it, he can heal me in the midst of it. If I don't get it, he's still God all by himself. But I can't walk in fear thinking, uh, it's like, uh, I, I liken it, it's like we have rain, storm, thunderstorms all the time. And you'll walk out to your car and get in your car knowing that a lightning can hit you at any time. But you keep going. I got to go. I got to, I got to move. I can't sit still. And so we have to believe God. This is a prophetic word. And I, I'm sharing some of the prophetic. This is interesting. A prophetic word that the ungodly say that Christianity is dead in America. This is a, a, 
Lance Waldo spoke this, and I, I just agree with it. He said they, they drag out their fear statistics. They give you a graph. They show you how the trend's going to be, how the coronavirus curves are going to be. They pull out scientists that are supposed to be experts that don't know what they're talking about because they never dealt with the virus before. Uh, and, 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 and they say, and now they're saying, oh, the coronavirus is going to come back in the fall. It's going to be worse than the first time. Ten times as bad. This is negative boasting from the pits of hell against nations against people that against people the cardinal ideas uh, they thought that would destroy the church are actually awakening the church i defy that it's not going to get worse god is the god of, of, of that we agree with the devil see the church has been asleep but now because of this attack people are beginning to wake up and say wait a minute all of this stuff that they're saying ain't true in first samuel 17 32 david said to saul let no man's heart fall because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. See, our battle is in the spirit realm. Our battle is in the apostolic warfare, dealing with this coronavirus, blocking its, 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 its path and, 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 and causing it to go back. As I prophesy, as quickly as it came, as quickly it's going to go. Amen. As quickly as it came, quickly it will go. We have authority over that, over that spirit. Have you noticed that the coronavirus likes damp, dark places to survive? It can't come to the light. Ultraviolet light and light burns it up. Certain temperatures burn it up. It's just like the devil. He's sneaky. Notice how the, this, this, this thing is attacking the elderly. It's attacking the elderly in the nursing homes. Those that are weak, those that are vulnerable. When the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, the Bible says that the Amalekites came up behind them and got all the weak ones and those that were lagging behind, they got knocked off. And God said, lead the Amalekites' line into the fullness of their sin. I'm going to deal with them because of their wickedness. So God, the wreckage that's caused by the bankrupt values in America and the haters of God everywhere. It's always been here, but it di we didn't pay attention to it. We didn't take notice uh, and time to see that the, the, there are people on the far, far left, we call them, the far left, that has drained, they have drained the beauty of childhood. God said, I got to restore it. I got to have, I'm, I'm going to have you stay home for, for two months, take care of your children, teach them at home, learn their children, have a relationship. Because uh, it, it, for years now, since the 60s, uh, the 70s, we've every, both parents have had to go to work. You have a child, you get six weeks off or 10 weeks off, and you take that child and give it to a babysitter. And, then, and or take it to a nursery when it's two years old or three years old and let the nursery raise your children and, and, and parents don't even know their own children. And so God said, I got to restore this. But this far left has, has, has destroyed childhood. Uh, school shootings, our children are afraid. You know, they got scanners now and things that children uh, can't even go to school. A romance, laughter, innocence, friendship, nature. You go, they arrested a man because he had him and his daughter was out in the park. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, our, our young people, are, there's, they're, they're worried about their scholarships. There's athletics. There's not going to be any college scholarships, no athletics, no colleges are open, no schools, no proms. No, no, you know, we, we grew up, we, you know, you get to dress up and go to, I didn't go to my prom. I wasn't interested in it. But I didn't go to proms. We were too broke, so we didn't go. <laughs> Amen. But graduations and proms, these kids can't get that. They're not going to get that this year. They're at home. Those stuck at home, now they got a time to think about why in the world they believe such insane ideas. You're hearing these politicians, oh, we're going to give everybody a check. Oh, the government should pay for your college education. Oh, you don't need to work. Oh, we're going to do it. And they're waiting on that government check will put you in a pit, and you'll stay in that pit. I'm still waiting on my check. I don't know if y'all got y'all check, but I ain't got no check either. Amen. I know the big rich folks got theirs, but I ain't getting mine. You got your check? You got your check. Praise God for getting your check. Amen. But don't depend on that check because that check going to dry up next month. They don't open things back up. Luke 21 says that, uh, I shared this last week, that previous to all this, they will lay hands on you and persecute you. People are going to hate you as a believer whether you do anything or not. 
It's going to come. It's, hatred is going to come because you are a believer. They're turning you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be led away before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be a time, an opportunity for you to bear testimony that God healed you in the midst of what's going on around the world. People are sheltering in place. Uh, uh, if, it, if it gets hot in the summer and they keep people at home, you will see all kind of picking and rioting and stuff going on, mob actions taking place. Uh, people get frustrated when they get to shut in. For 40 days, this Philistine said, come on down and fight me. Come on down and fight me. But then when somebody that was small came up, he decided that he would challenge Goliath. And Saul, King Saul tried to put his armor on him, tried to put his mantle on David said, I can't. I can't operate in your mantle. I got to operate in what I know and what I'm able. He said, I killed a lion. I killed a bear. All I need is five rocks, five smooth stones, and I'll go deal with Goliath. I am accurate in what I'm doing. I've been on the backside in the wilderness with these sheep, stepping in the sheep dung and sheep dip all the time, taking care of these stanky sheep. I know how to fight. And so there is a remnant that God is looking for in this hour to stand up against the, the, the lies of the enemy, against the attacks of pandemic. This is only one pandemic. There's going to be more woe. microphone praise the lord so they were in so we're here for a testimony so things are going to turn around you've got a short window i believe between now and the fall to really do a work but the, i believe revival is coming god right now is separating the two groups in the church there'll be no more cardinal voices on tv their voices the carnality the the, the uh i call them christian celebrities their viewpoints are opposite of what God is going to and God's going to do. There's a generation that's rising up that's going to say, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause in the church? The Bible says he shall separate the sheep on the right and the goats on the left. And there's a separating taking place right now in the church. Um, some pastors have died. Some... Uh, 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 <coughs> Have survived the coronavirus some have not gotten a crown the flashy the fleshly Christian celebrities were warned we've been warning them for years get your act together but now it's too late I said it's too late it's over the deadline was the coronavirus that was God's deadline to get right with God how can you remain carnal and self-important in the face of this crisis we had Christians running all over the states, all over the world, running to conferences. I want to hear this speaker. I want them to prophesy to me. I want this anointing. I want that anointing. And that's not, that was not God's plan. As I said last week, the rebellious believers are being left out to receive to themselves the fruit of their rebellion and their rejection of the Holy Spirit and God's ways. God was trying to come into the church, let, let the prophetic worship come, let the sound of Judah come, let the words of knowledge come, and a lot of churches shut it down. They didn't want it because they didn't want deliverance. They didn't want the people to be delivered. Uh, they spoke against the prophetic. They spoke against the apostolic. Well, they're being shut down and, 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 and separated out, and uh, God is removing them, and they're going to receive the fruit of the rebellion. Gideon was told to go fight in a battle, but he said, the Lord said, wait a minute, you got too many people with you. Tell them to go down and drink at the river. And the 32,000 went down and he wound up with only 300, a remnant of believers. So how will God separate? How will God distinguish the ghosts in the river? Because those that are a remnant will receive a great anointing. It's like, uh, the, the, one of the prophets said, it's like oil and honey mixed together. It's that thick that it's going to rest on the remnant. They're going to know that you're anointed. They're going to know that you're of the kingdom of God. They're going to see 
the glory of the Lord on you. So God is separating those that have prepared their hearts, those that have prayed, those that have been crying out, those that have been interceding. The, as I said week before last, the hirelings have been chased out of the church. Those that are in churches just for a paycheck. I've, I've, I've talked to pastors and I've ministered to pastors uh, that were in denominations and they, they said, I don't know how to get out of the denomination. If I, if I, if I embrace the prophetic... If I embrace the apostolic, they'll kick me out of my church because the denomination owns the building. How do I trans transition into the apostolic without getting uh, destroyed? I had a pastor down in Texas. He wanted, his wife wanted, his wife came to one of the meetings I had down in Texas. They were Baptists, and his wife came, and he came, and, and I began to call out demons, and people began to manifest, and... The anointing hit him, hit his church. This one Baptist pastor, he went back to his church that Sunday morning and did the same thing I did and started calling out demons, and they had a breakout time. But one of the pastor's wives, she invited me to come and teach the prophetic and teach prayer to the pastor and his staff, the elders. And I did, and I prophesied on to him and over him, and he had a big church. He had a church, a couple thousand people. But when the denomination got wind of deliverance taking place and the prophetic took place in his church, they kicked him out of his church and put him in a church in a ghetto neighborhood that had 200 members. Persecution came. Deacons are like guard dogs, are supposed to be the guard dogs in the house of the Lord. They're supposed to protect the sheep, but we have deacons that have been, uh, even in Aurora, years ago, 10, 20 years ago, there are deacons that were molesting the boys in the church, denominational churches, and the girls in the church. They're being removed out of God's church. And the goats, the goats are people that are got to stick their nose in everything and every business in the church. Goats climb on anything and are into everything. They want to be around. And sometimes some of the shepherds, they, they raise goats and sheep together. But goats, you can't keep them in the pen. They, they climb on anything. They'll eat anything. They'll go anywhere. Uh, they always button. You know, you talk to them. Yeah, pastor, but. Yeah, but what? No, pastor, but. Uh, they didn't call me. You didn't call me to fast. You called the rest of the church to fast. Yeah, but. They always got a yeah, but card in their hand. Amen. You try to tell them something. That, those are the goats. If you read, <laughs> read Proverbs, the Bible says goats are for your milk and for your clothing. They're okay uh, they have goats in the sheepfold because goats don't eat sheep. Wolves eat sheep. But Jesus said in the end time, there's going to be a separation of the goats from the sheep. So the separation is taking place. The church has been shut down. God has put his name over the door. I'm shutting it down. And a lot of many preachers are going to emerge from this not realizing they have been demoted. Hear me. Many preachers are going to come out of this corona thing not really they have been demoted, that they've missed their time of visitation. Luke 19.41 says, And as he approached, he saw the city, and he wept audibly over it, exclaiming, Would that you have known personally, even at least in this your day, the things that make for peace, for freedom from all distresses that are experienced as a result of sin upon which your peace, your security, your safety, your prosperity, and your happiness depends on. But now they are hidden from your eyes. So Jesus came and he weeped over Jerusalem and he was weeping over them because uh, they were so bound by religion uh, they would count the bells on the bottom of their their, their robes and they, they would say these uh, repetition prayers all the time and if you go watch them at the Wailing Wall they stand there and they say the same prayers over and over and over and over and over again not prayers out of the heart but just out of tradition saying them and they would, they would he said you, you, you follow every dot, every tittle in the wall they, they, every word they, 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 they follow every word but there was no spirit in them 
They fed the letter of the law, but they had no spirit in them. And Jesus wept because he knew that all these people were coming. They were bringing their, their, their sacrifices, what was required of them. They would bring their doves, and they were selling them sick doves and sick sheep and sick sacrifices in the temple and charging them next amount of money uh, for sacrifices. And, and, and no one was getting healed. Only one person got healed when the water was troubled at the pool of Bethesda each year. So Jesus was weeping. He said, if you just would have known the time, if you would would have known that I'm here if you would have known the king of king and the lord of lords is in the midst of you if you would have known that healing is right here if you would have known that deliverance is right here you would not have missed your time of visitation even Nicodemus didn't miss his time. He snuck out at night and went and seen Jesus and, and began to ask him what must I do to be saved Jesus said you got to be born again he said, well, can I be born out of my mother's womb? He said, no, you must be born of the water and of the spirit in order for you to enter and see the kingdom of God. And so Jesus was saying, the time of visitation is a word uh, for like a bishop. The bishop of the church, he is the superintendent. His job is, in the Old Testament, was the, uh, when the king had, the priest had, he had sons, Ahab had sons, and they would roll, ride on donkeys in every village and stuff and share the word. Uh, 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 even in Josiah's time, they would send the priest out on donkeys, and they would ride the circuit. So a bishop was one to come and relieve the local shepherd. If the local shepherd needed to, was sick or he needed a vacation or something, he would come and relieve them, and he would come and inspect the church, whether it was good or bad. So that word, that word visitation, time of visitation, it, be, it means a superintendent or someone to come to visit as whether it's good or whether he's coming for good or whether he's coming for bad, whether he's coming to deflock you or rebuke you or correct you. But that, that, that's a, the type of what Jesus was saying. I'm coming to inspect my church. And he walked into the church and said, you made my church a house of thieves and den of thieves. He said, my church shall be called a house of prayer. Now, there are several illustrations that the, in the Bible of is there not a cause that God wants to get involved in this coronavirus thing and we're coming to the end of it. As I said, it will leave as quickly as it came. There was a, there was a Syrian king, Syrian king uh, named Ben-Hadad. And Ben-Hadad had came against, uh, at the time, uh, Ahab was king. 1 Kings chapter uh, 20, verse 7 and 8 says, then the king of Israel called to the elder. Now this, Ben-Hadad came. He was a Syrian. He came and he told, uh, 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 he sent his emissary to the, to the city and said, now I want all the silver and I want all your gold and I, what's in your treasuries and I want your wives and your children. And uh, the Bible says, says that, he, that Ahab sent him silver and gold. But then he came back and said, uh, not only I want that, but I want to come in and ins take, inspect your servant's house and whatever I see, I'm going to take. I want to take everything because he was wicked. He said, now then the king of Israel called, verse, 1 Kings 20, verse 7, says the king of Israel called all the elders of the land and said, notice and see how this man is seeking our destruction. The coronavirus is seeking our destruction. He sent to me for my wives, my children, my silver, my gold, and I did not refuse them. I said, okay, okay, I, I, you're bigger than us. We gonna, I'm going to relent. And, to, and all the elders and all the people said to him, don't heed him or consent because he's lying. He's going to take anything anyway. He's going to kill everybody anyway. And so the spirit of destruction or the waster came to Israel to destroy them. And so Ahab sent the elders, sent the youth out, the young men. They were teenagers, the princes, to the battle. Ben had that, was in his tent getting drunk. He was part. He said, I know I'm going to whoop them anyway. I'm, you know, he had that pride spirit. I'm a, we're going to kill him. We're going to devour. They're going to do what I did. I mean, they already told me they're going to get the silver and gold. And so uh, they sent the kids out, and, and they came and told him, they didn't send all these teenagers out here to fight us. He said, whether, whether they come to fight or whether they come to give up, don't kill them. Don't, don't kill these kids. And the Bible says that these kids came out and killed everybody that they fought. The anointing of God came on the youth the young eagles, and they killed every man his man. And the Bible says that the Syrians ran. Ben Adad got on a horse and took off running. 
Is there not a cause? And then after they got to battle, the prophet came to him. He said, strengthen yourselves because the Syrians will try to come back. They already said, the coronavirus is left now. He's going to come back. 1 Kings 20, verse 22, says, the prophet came to the king of Israel and said, go fortify yourself, become strong, and give attention to what you must do. And I'm telling you, pastors now around the world, even though if this virus comes back, in this law, you need to begin to prepare your people, begin to prepare your stores, begin to put away food, begin to put away provision uh, for your people. So if it does come back, that they do try to shut it down again, you may provision for another attack. And so the prophet saying, you need to become strong. You need to fortify yourself. You need to get now. You need to go start making arrows. You need to start making bowls. You need to start making swords. He said, because the Syria... He says, give attention to what you do. For at the first of the next year, the king of Syria will return against you. So when the prophet begins to see and begin to say that something worse is coming down the road, you need to prepare yourself for what's getting ready to happen. You must do what you need to do because the enemy was going to come. Even when Jesus was attacked by Satan in the wilderness, the Bible says that he left him for a season. The devil will attack you, and when you beat him, he leaves, and then he'll wait for another opportunity to get, get back at you. And verse 23 says, The servants of the king of Syria said to him, Israel gods are the gods of the hill. Therefore, they are stronger than we. But let us fight against them in the plain. Surely, we will be stronger than they. So the enemy will attack, attack them one time. He said, wait a minute. They got a big strong God, but we're going to fight them anyway. Or they whooped us on the mountain. But let's see how they fare in the valley or in the plain. See, fear always comes to threaten the worst is going to happen. Fear over this nation, fear of America. Oh, you got the coronavirus, shut in. Oh, it's getting better. We can go back out. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't go back out there not just yet. Uh, fear says, he's coming back. You need to prepare for it. You got your mask ready now? Amen. You got your toilet paper stocked up? <laughs> Did you freeze the fool? He's coming back, y'all. The devil is a lie. There is a cause in the, in the church that will stand against the works of darkness in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So the Syrians came back the second time and they heard what Ben Haddad had said. That he's the God of the hills, but he ain't the God of valley. We whooped everybody. And God heard it, and he sent an angel to destroy them. Now, one version says he, they had 250,000, and, and uh, the angel killed 105,000 in one night. Either his arm was tired or he had the coronavirus with him, and it was just <laughs> taking people out <laughs> quickly. <laughs> Amen. The, the deaf angel came through. But see, there was a cause when you start talking about God and God ain't God and God is not involved and God is not powerful to deal with the coronavirus. Second, third example was that they came, the Assyrians came. I want you to hear this now. In 2 Kings 18, Hezekiah was king. Isaiah was the prophet of the land. And Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, came up against Jerusalem. Amen? Actually came against Judah. They had already captured Jerusalem. They took those into captivity. Babylon took them into captivity. Now the Assyrians, you need to understand that the Assyrians were cruel. They were very fierce. They were very smart. They had composite bowls they had made. They were the ones that invented the catapult that would send big rocks hurling and knocking walls and, and doors and, and walls down. And they were very, very wicked. They would capture the enemy. They would peel the skin off of them and, and, and paste them on the, on the posts of the city. They would impale the captives on 10 foot poles with sharp stakes on it. And they, would, they would place the person on the top of the pole, 
drop them on that pole and have them tied there, and, the, and the weight of their body would push them down on the pole. The, the, the history says that they, when they left the land, they, they had a black forest. The black forest was all the people on the poles, the bodies had sh wasted away and turned black. They were so fierce, and this is how fear does, that no one dared rise up against them because how the wickedness they were. They were so wicked. And so these Assyrians came up against Harris, uh, uh, Hezekiah, uh, Judah. They encamped around Judah. Now Judah is the house of praise. So they came and encamped in the city, one of the cities in Judah. Nor let Hez he, now here's the, here, he sent, Sennacherib sent his emissary, Repsika, and Repsika came and he was talking to the leaders and he was talking to them in, in Hebrew, in the Jewish language. And, and Hezekiah's scribe and Shibna and everyone said, don't be speaking, don't be speaking at the, but they were speaking because the people were up on the wall listening to what they were saying and they were speaking it in, in Jewish. So the Jewish people were been getting afraid, getting fear. And so he said, no, he said, don't let Hezekiah make you trust in and rely on the Lord. The Lord will surely deliver us and this city will not be given in the hand of a serious king. He said, don't listen to your king talking about trust God. Don't go to church. Don't listen to the apostles. Don't listen to the prophets. You better listen to us. You better shelter in place. You better submit to us. 31, hearken not to Hezekiah, for thus said the king of Assyria, make your peace with me and come out to me. Eat everyone from his own vine and fig tree and drink everyone in the waters of those. Stay at home. I'm going to send you a government check. Just, just relax. Be cool. I'm going to take care of you. Lying through his teeth. And so the enemy offers a false hope. Now, these Assyrians, over, the, over 20, 30 years, they had trained. This is the prophetic word that God has said, I'm releasing uh, the warring e eagles. Generation is being released. The Assyrians, for over years, had trained these eagles. Now, the harpy eagle can grow wingspan, and, and, and the uh, uh, golden eagle can have a wingspan of almost 10 feet. And what they would do is they train these eagles to fly, and they, and, and they had 7,000 of them. They had, they had cultivated 7,000. And so when they came against uh, uh, Israel, they had 700 of them. These handlers had trained the eagles. Listen to this. They would wrap leather thongs around the eagles' legs. And in this leather thongs that hung down would be little balls with sharp edges on them in there. And these handlers would run with the eagle. And they would run and the eagle would fly and it would lift them five to ten feet. And it would take leaps almost 30 feet. They would fly 30 feet, and the eagle would come down because of the weight, and then they would run again, and they would leap. I mean, they were swift. I mean, they would fly, and they hold on to these eagles, and they would advance on the enemy with these eagles, and when they got close, they would let the eagles go, and the eagles were trained to fight against the enemy, and so what these eagles would do is they would swoop down at 90 miles an hour with these metal balls hanging down off their legs, leather straps with these little balls and they would decapitate people as they flew by with their wings. This is in the history. I mean, this is how vicious they were. They said that they killed over 2,000 people in that siege of Israel, of Judah. They trained it. And so God said, I'm going to raise up warring eagles that will fight in the spirit realm. A new generation of young people are arising they're going to rise up on the scene because there is a cause. There is a cause. America and the world, is, is, is America especially is on the, as I said, on the premises, either we're going to have a great revival, the church is going to bear down, stand against the negative words and the negative things that are coming from the far left. We're going to stand against it. If we don't, we're going to have great judgment. God says it's through. I'm through with y'all. You had an opportunity to fight, and you didn't fight. So we're in that place now. 
the next four years can be four years of prosperity, peace, and revival, or the next four years can be hell on earth. So it's up to the church. It's up to the remnant, the prayer wars. Even in your prayer time and in your, when you're at home, you need to keep praying whatever God gives you to pray for, whatever you see, pray against it. Pray, 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 pray. Prayer is what supports heaven. Hezekiah, when he heard this, that they were coming, he went, and you read it, you can read it, and I think it's Isaiah 36 or something like that that's also in there, that he took, he took the letters that, that Shenetra sent, and he went and spread it in the house of the Lord. He said, Lord, look at this. And he began to cry out to God, aren't you the God of heaven? He said, Hez he said Shenetra says, uh, uh, where's that? I think I got the scripture. Yeah, 2 Kings 18, verse 24, he says, Sinatra told him, saying, how then can you beat back one captain among the least of my master's servants? This is Reb Sika talking to the Jew, uh, Israel. When you trust, when your trust is put in Egypt for chariots and horsemen, how can the church fight against wickedness in the earth when we put our trust in the government? Egypt is the type of the world. See, uh, uh, the king had covenant with Egypt to help him fight if somebody attacked him. But Egypt wasn't coming to their rescue. Amen? So they're, they're bragging on him. He said, have I come up without the Lord against this place to destroy it? The Lord said to me, now this is the king of Assyria saying to the Jew, the Lord said to me, go up against this land and destroy it. Now we know the guy said, I'm going to judge Israel. And he took the 10 tri 12 tribes, he gave 10 one side and two on the other side. That 10 tribes went into captivity. But God also made a covenant with David. He said, I will never let the throne be depart out of the house of David. And so Hezekiah went into prayer. Hezekiah went into intercession. You can't trust in the government checks. You can't trust in the food pantries. You can't, you got to trust in God. People all over the states, everywhere, people that have never had to go to a food pantry have been broken down to where they've had to go to a food pantry. Car lines, 700, 800 cars in, in food pantry. If the next one comes and they shut down the meat factories and the food pantries and, and the distribution, then you will start seeing soup kitchens. Depression would hit in on the earth. And that's what they're fighting against, that recession and depression doesn't come and recession doesn't come. They've got to get the people back to work. So we're in a battle. The devil don't want you to go back to work. The devil said, I'm going to offer you, I'm going to give you a check. Up in Canada, they're not going back to work until next year. They get a check, $2,000 a month. Do you talking about sheep being controlled and manipulated? That is trouble. Once you get a person and you're giving them that, they don't want to go to work. Look at the ghettos. As long as they get that, that link card, go to work. <laughs> I take the check. I can get used to this lifestyle. I got a uh, Section 8 housing. I can get free food every month. I know the system. I know where to go to the food pantries to get everything I need. I'll survive. I'll survive. But God's not looking for us to survive. Then in verse 34, he said, he said where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad in Syria? Where are the gods of Sarah Harvim, Hina, Iva, in the Euphrates River Valley? Have they delivered Samaria, Israel capital, out of my hand? So here he is bragging and saying, I didn't beat Baal, I beat Moloch, I beat all the other countries' gods, and, and you think I'm not going to come in and beat, your, beat you? Your God told me to come beat you. So he, he's saying all this stuff out of his mouth, you know, just saying this. Who of all the gods, this is when God got involved, of the countries have delivered his country out of my hand, that the Lord should Jerusalem them out of my hand. See, Satan likes to brag how bad he is. He likes to brag how strong he is. He likes to brag like Goliath. Come on down. You can't beat me. Come on down if you dare. Come fight me. Come fight me. But God heard it. Hezekiah went there and started interceding. He said, wait a minute, Lord. Let me go talk to the prophet. 2 Kings 19, 6 says, Isaiah said to them, say to your master, Hezekiah, Hezekiah called the prophet. The prophet said, thus saith the Lord, don't be afraid because of the words you have heard. 
which the servants of the king of Assyria have reviled and blasphemed me. See, God's not going to let you shut his church down. The Bible says the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. The Bible says that we overcome in the end. So if we overcome in the end, it behooves you not to be like Saul's servants. Remember when Saul was being attacked, King Saul was being attacked by the Philistines and, and, and Samuel told him, he said, you go on the mountain and wait for me 10 days. I'll be there in 10 days to make a sacrifice. And the Bible says that because of the boasting and the bragging and the multitude that was coming against them, that the people ran and sheltered. They ran to caves. They ran to the houses. They ran. Saul didn't even have an army left. He's standing there with a few guys because everybody ran because of the fear that was in the land. And then he forced himself to sacrifice in the priest's office where he was not a priest. He was not anointed to do that. He went in there and made a sacrifice before Samuel got there. And when Samuel got there, he said, what have you done? This day, and he grabbed hold of Samuel's garment and, and tore it. And he said, this day has the kingdom been snatched out of your hands. And the spirit of God, the anointing, left the denominational church, or the evangelical church. And for almost 20 years, David was chased by Saul until the fulfillment of the prophetic word was fulfilled. The pro prophetic word from 2009 and 2000, whatever Kim Kim prophesied over Kim Jong-un came to pass yesterday. The man is gone. He's dead. He's dead. He, he died. His sister's in charge now. Kim Jong-un was gone. They tried to do a blotched heart operation on him, put a stint in his heart, and I did something wrong, and he became a vegetable. He's gone. Kim Kim prophesied in 2009. He said, you are already brain dead. It took 11 years for that prophetic word to come to pass. And so now we got to pray that China doesn't get hold of North Korea and South Korea because that's what North Korea was their puppet. So now they're going to try to take over things so we got to pray against a war over there second kings 19 7 say behold i will put spirit in him so that he will hear a rumor and return to his own land and i will cause him to fall by the sword in his own country so in this hour we need a prophetic word to speak and i'm speaking prophetically that this thing will come but it'll leave in the same in the same matter that it came we stand against it we were not you will not uh, uh, come against the living god god is a god of all all creation and he's in control of everything that is it. hezekiah began to uh, uh, pray he said he said this day is of extreme danger this is a day of a distress and of rebuke of chastisement of blasphemous insolent insult for the children to come to uh, come forth to birth and there's no strip to bring forth that it may be the Lord God will hear the word so he began to say Lord I remember what I did I pulled down the groves I pulled down the altars and high places Lord you, you I did deliverance Lord I did whatever he said they insulted your name they defied your name saying that they, you can't deliver them us out of your hand and he began to pray and God said don't worry about it and so the service of King Hezekiah came to Hezekiah and Hezekiah interceded and the enemy turned around and he heard a rumor, and the king heard a rumor that his land was being attacked, and they turned around and went back the other way. He said, in 2 Kings 19, 7, he said, Behold, I'll put a spirit in him so he will hear a rumor and return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own country. Religious, I mean, political politics will kill him. He's out here fighting, and, and there are people on, trying to get his throne. And when he goes back, they have set him up, and they're going to kill him. See, God has a plan for everything. And we just got to follow him in this hour and not give up and not give up hope. So I'm, I speak that the eagles are rising. I speak that the Davids are rising. Those that have a different spirit, those that are not afraid to confront Corona, those that are not afraid to cut the mainstream news, those that are not afraid to confront even the, the president and, 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 the, and, and the politicians and those that are doing wrong and saying wrong things. Father, let their church rise up and become a light in a dark place. We decree and declare that the church is alive. We decree and declare that our 
God is our God and the shout of the Lord is in the camp in the house of God. We still have a shout. We still have a God that doesn't fall off the throne. He's not deaf. He can't hear. His arms are not short. He can't touch. He is living. He is a living God. He lives in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. His anointing, the blood of Jesus covers us. His seed is in it. Is in and the Bible says that he puts his seed in us, his DNA, everything about him, his healing attributes, his deliverance attributes, his prophetic word, his words of wisdom and knowledge is inside of us and he's just unfolding us. He's put us in a dark place that we may germinate and come out in his glory, that we may explode with glory in this end time. So let the glory of the Lord be risen upon thee. Arise, shine, church, for the glory is risen upon you. It's time to get up and go confront the enemy and begin to see the harvest come in but in Jesus name amen, amen. and amen Hallelujah. That a believer is God's secret weapon. We have been hidden in his quiver and we are the broken one. We have been in a place of brokenness. A place of brokenness is the place of birthing. Those who prayed in secret now shall be rewarded openly. Those who have been praying have been sealed in their forehead by the Holy Spirit. Those that have been praying have been sealed by God. You've been anointed by God and appointed. When the coronavirus sees you, it's got to go the other way. When the coronavirus comes near your house, it's got to go the other way. You've been anointed for such a time as this. The wine, the latter rain, the latter wine is coming, being released by the Father. Even now, you're going to feel a, par, a wet liquid pouring on you in your home, when you worship, when you pray, in your car. God's going to pour it out without measure, and you're going to know that you know that you know that you have the power of God resident on the inside of you. And we give him the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. We'll be here next week. Hear this word, share this word, and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. How far did I go? Did I go 50 minutes? <laughs>